Hey everybody, it's Patty here. It's a Tuesday, I believe, day 700 and something of uh, our sheltering in place. And so I'm doing another video uh, by request, thank you, uh, to all my friends who indulge me. But anyway, if you're wondering about the hair, um, I like to call it um, Pandemic Periwinkle. It's a color. You'll see it on the shelf soon. Anyway, <laughs> we've been having a little fun with that since, well, why not? Right? Anyway, um, so before I get to what I'm cooking, which is something very super simple that everybody can do, um, one of the things I, I'm always asked is, how do you just hurry up and throw together a quick dinner like you do? Um, how do you know, I have to think about it more. So before I get into that, I wanted to show you what some of the things that I have on hand all the time, um, which is a big help when you're staring blankly into your refrigerator and pantry and wondering what the heck you're gonna cook. So I wanna start with just absolute basics. I keep kosher salt. I cook with kosher salt all the time. Um, it's just better. As you can see, it's it's um, thicker granules and uh, it just flavors the food better. I use it to cook even in pasta water, everything. So um, garlic, always have garlic on hand, always have onions on hand in the fridge, some shallots if I'm making a quick dressing and so on. Those things keep in the refrigerator a long time. I always have citrus, I always have juice for citrus. Um, lemons, limes, always have that on hand um, for a variety of things, dressings to flavor foods, for zesting and so on. Now to the pantry, um, chicken broth, chicken stock, um, you'll hear me mention Trader Joe's a lot. I am an aficionado of Trader Joe's. I am not on their payroll and I um, get nothing from mentioning Trader Joe's, okay? Let me just uh, disclaimer, that's my disclaimer. But practically, no, I'm gonna say everything that is on this table is uh, can be purchased at Trader Joe's. And um, it's one of my favorite stores. I love their products. Their pricing is reasonable. It's, uh, the people are pleasant. I can't say enough about Joe's. Anyway, broth, chicken stock. I usually keep vegetable stock, chicken stock um, on hand all the time. I also keep it in a form of this stuff called Better Than Bouillon. It's a creamy based um, um, base for soups, different meals, uh, different sauces that you make. Um, you can use it in a concentrated form or you can uh, use it as just a small amount for flavoring, but they make it in every fish stock, um, chicken, beef, mushroom. I use the mushroom one a lot. So these are wonderful um, to have on hand, okay? Um, this is probably the most important one. Um, these are San Marzano tomatoes. Um, they are the cream of the crop, the best tomato you can get anywhere. They're from a particular region in Naples, up under Mount Vesuvius. The volcanic soil produces these amazing tomatoes, and um, these are certified, and they are um, real San Marzano tomatoes, not San Marzano labeled. So you want to make sure that you buy the real thing, and I'll show you what they look like when I open the can. Um, one thing I have to say about ingredients is, uh, especially what I cook, which is mostly Italian stuff, uh, is ingredients need to be good quality, high quality. Most of the time recipes are very simple, there's few ingredients, um, but you gotta go um, with the good stuff, okay? So if you buy Hunt's diced tomatoes in the can, I promise you it will not be anything like what it's supposed to taste like. So there you have it. Um, here's another one. This is good quality canned Italian tuna packed in olive oil. It's super flavorful. Um, I put this in a variety of different dishes, um, salads and so on. And it's not like any tuna that you normally have. Um, things like capers. I keep capers all the time. I use them in a lot of different recipes. Things like olives in a jar or a can. 
These are um, organic pitted Kalamata olives, Greek olives, which are wonderful, really briny and delicious. Canned beans, always have canned beans on hand, red beans. These are great northern beans or cannellini beans, which is the ones you would make if you were making pasta fagioli. Uh, I make a wonderful dip with these um, with uh, lemon. It's sort of like a hummus, but it's made with beans. Um, good quality olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Let's see, I already did the tuna. Of course, vinegars, different vinegars. I have wine vinegar, champagne vinegar, um, balsamic, of course, um, for finishing and also for, you know, in a dressing and so on. Rice, I make a lot of risottos. So arborio rice, which is the thick chubby rice. <laughs> chubby rice, short, short grain rice. Um, of course, a variety of pastas, depending on what you're making and so on different shapes of pasta lend themselves to certain recipes more because of either the ridges or the holes or the whatever but honestly you can whatever you like you know if you or your family like certain shapes more than others then that's what you should use and this is not pantry this is freezer but this is also something i keep on hand almost all the time and this is really cheating because these are wild caught um argentine shrimp raw, but um, peeled, deveined, ready to go. I keep these in bags in the freezer and you can do a lot of different things with these. They fall out within five minutes. You can rinse them, pat them dry and do all kinds of things with it. So today I'm just gonna make a simple tomato sauce and throw it over some pasta. One of our friends brought his little girls over here um, not too long ago and um, I made this for them for lunch because I figured what kid doesn't like pasta and tomato sauce and, and cheese. So um, the next day I get a call from their mother wanting to know what the heck did you feed my kids yesterday because they haven't stopped talking about it since then. I think, you know, kids love pasta anyway. And this is about as simple and genuine a dish as you can make. And in the time that it takes to boil water, um, you can put this together for your family. So what I like about a simple tomato sauce like I'm going to make for you right now is that you can, for example, um, add some of this beautiful canned tuna and olives and capers, you know, as much or as little as you want, and you've got a wonderful, delicious pasta meal that you can serve to anybody and it's wonderful. Um, you can take some of these shrimp and add a little extra wine uh, and saute the shrimp and add your tomato sauce. I've done that many, many, many times. Um, chicken, you can saute some chicken and whatever you like. So to this basic sauce, you can do a lot of different things. I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible today because this is something that I promise you, your kids, your husband, your neighbor, your mailman, everybody will want this because it's wonderful and easy and delicious. And you'll be amazed at how um, simple and few ingredients, but again, the key is good stuff, good quality. Okay, so I've cleared away all of the other stuff and I've kept what I'm going to use to make my sauce. So very quickly, I've got a pot of water boiling on the stove to which I'm going to add a generous small handful, let's say a heaping tablespoon of salt to that water. I know that some people freak out over that and say, what are you doing? I can't have all that salt. You're not having the salt. The salt is just flavoring the water that you're going to cook your pasta in, I promise you but it's really important. So I've got pasta water boiling. I've got a skillet on the stove. If you don't have a big skillet, you don't need that. You can do it in a saucepan if you want to and then combine the two. I like to just toss my pasta into the saucepan, I mean, into the skillet when it's all coming together and it just, it's just how I'm used to doing it. So basically this recipe is one can of San Marzano tomatoes I have three cloves of chopped garlic. I've got some wonderful basil that I keep in a potted, you know, outside the door. So I, I keep 
basic herbs that I grow for this purpose that have been washed and I'll show you. One pound of pasta, I chose the rigatoni and of course salt and pepper. And so what I'm going to do right now very simply is, as far as the oil goes, eh, I know everybody wants measurements, but I'm gonna say, how about a quarter of a cup? A little more, a little less. Um, is fine. So I am going to cook my garlic and this is where you really can't walk away. It's important not to walk away because garlic will burn on you and you, once it does that's it. You have to start over. Okay so here in my pan with olive oil I'm just sauteing the garlic. Now if you were making this for grown-ups you might want to add some pepper flakes in here right now. But if you're cooking it for kids, they may not like things spicy, so you probably want to just leave it as is. But the garlic is getting fragrant, and we want to get it to just the point where it's just starting to turn color. In the meantime, my water is boiling, and I have put salt in the water, so I'm just going to add my pasta into there. Also very important is when you first put the pasta in the water, you also want to give it a stir because otherwise they're going to all get stuck together and then you won't be able to unstick them. You don't want to overcook your pasta. Pasta is going to take about seven or eight minutes to cook. Um, it'll come back up to a boil now. Um, and you want to taste it, but you definitely want it al dente. Now you see how the garlic is just getting to this little blonde stage right here? And that's what you're looking for. So I'm just gonna gingerly pour my San Marzano tomatoes into this. And I'm gonna give it a stir so it doesn't splatter all over. Maybe turn it down just a little. And then, here's what I find that works real well, is a potato masher, and very carefully so that they don't squirt on you. Just cut up mash up your whole tomatoes. These are the best, sweetest, most delicious tomatoes anywhere. And they're totally worth the four bucks a can or whatever they are. So anyway, San Marzano, get the imported ones. As you can see, I like it a little chunky, so you don't have to like pulverize, but just enough so that your tomatoes are now mashed and then I take the can and put about a oh, third of a cup of water in there and just get all of the good stuff that's still in the can and put that in there because that will evaporate very quickly as it cooks. So now I've got my tomatoes bubbling and then I'm going to take some of my fresh basil. I like to put some in in the beginning and I like to put some more fresh in at the end. But I'm just taking those washed basil leaves. You can chiffonade, you can tear them, you can, if you like them real little, you can do that. But I just stack them up and break them up in my hand just like that and put the basil in. And then I'm gonna go with a nice, good, pinch or two of salt. You'll taste it before you're done just to make sure you have enough. And some nice cracked pepper. Give it a stir. Now my pasta's cooking. My tomato sauce. This is what we call a quick sauce. You know, this is not your Sunday ragu that you start cooking at 8 a.m. and put meats and things into and cook for hours. This is a very quick sauce. I guess the closest would be what you hear as marinara sauce. Um, it's just a quick, fresh tomato sauce. So what I'm gonna add to this sauce at the end to make it even more yummy is some cut up fresh mozzarella cheese and of course some good Parmesan cheese, okay? 
And when I say fresh mozzarella, I wanted you to see what it comes in a variety of forms. This is in a form of a log, okay? Um, it also comes in a container that looks like this, but um, it's sitting in a briny white liquid. That's fine too. Um, but fresh mozzarella is a little different than the dried, you know, mozzarella that shredded mozzarella that you find um, on the sh shelf in the deli or whatever. That's okay. You can also use that if you like. But this is going to make this even more yummy and delicious. And I want you to see what it looks like. So this has been pre-sliced, but sometimes it comes in a whole ball or little bitty balls. You can do that too, but these um, are pieces of fresh mozzarella that I'm just going to cut into smaller pieces and I'll show you what we're going to do with that when I finish the dish. Okay, so our sauce has been cooking for five, six minutes or so, as you can see. Good to go there. Our pasta is just about done. And I'm just gonna drain it off. One thing that I always like to um, say is if your sauce is um, in need, always um, hang on to some of your pasta water when you drain it out because you'll see people finishing their sauces with pasta water all the time. Not so much in this case because it's tomato-based simple sauce, but in many cases, when you drain this water out, as you can, this is beautiful starchy, pasta water, always reserve a half a cup or so um, before you drain it all away because um, it's gold. So there. <laughs> okay, I adjusted my seasoning. I added a little bit more salt and pepper to my sauce. Make sure you taste yours and see what it needs, okay? And now I am going to drain my pasta, which is good to go, ready to go. Now, just gonna Toss it right in here with the sauce. I'm gonna give it a little stir carefully so we don't coat the walls with all of our good stuff. And then, once I've done that, I'm gonna put in our beautiful fresh mozzarella that I've cut up into small pieces here. And this is actually going to melt, which is you know, who doesn't like sauce and melted cheese, stringy cheese, right? And then I'm going to add a nice, good handful of Parmesan cheese. And some additional fresh basil. If you want that fresh basil taste, the, the part I put in there cooked and gave the sauce flavor, but then you also want that nice fresh basil taste on top. So now that I have the cheeses and the basil and everything together, you can eat it right out of the pan or you could put it into a nice bowl and serve it to your family. But I'm telling you, I always say if I were on death row, this would be my last meal. It's all I need is a good plate of pasta, simple, genuinely prepared with good ingredients. So there you have it. Except maybe just a little bit more Parmesan on top. And voila.